Hello world, this is Derek Braid from Cashflow.ca. We're going to do another Meteor.js tutorial today. It's going to be a follow-on to a previous tutorial that I did that's on YouTube that focuses on scraping Twitter and uh, displaying that information on the page. You can find that by YouTube searching Meteor.js scraping, uh, visiting the URL. The reason I wanted to continue is because we stopped after we displayed the data on the page. And our goal is now to go one step further. We want to actually store that data inside of a database. And we're going to actually push it even further by finding a larger data set. And this is going to be a full stack demo. We're going to go through everything. So in order to bring yourself up to my current location, Go to this URL and clone the previous example from the repo. I've cloned it, cd into the directory, and run Meteor. That's it. That is all I've done. And we're running on localhost as the old tweets app, which is cool. If you watch the old video, this is exactly where we left off. So now, we need to improve on this. Let's get rid of this. And let's get organized by opening those files and getting a server going elsewhere. Copy my working directory, cd into it over here, and run Meteor. So now my server's going. I've got my files here. OK, no CSS, just a little bit of HTML. And we're not going to have tweets anymore. Um, what we're going to display now is a data table. And it's going to have data in it. OK. And in our JS, let me just make that a little bit smaller. We're going to do a lot of the similar things. We're going to make a call. We're going to do a meteor.call to something on the server. So in this case, we've got some method, and it's called get tweets. Oh, I'm going to rename that to get school data. And you'll see why in a second. So now we've got a method we're calling called get school data. And we don't have tweets anymore. Uh, we have data table. We're still going to use Cheerio, and we're still going to have a method, but we don't want this URL. We, we need to get a URL, but in this case, we're going to get public sector salary disclosure data from the school board. This is a subject that I'm very passionate about. So we're going to paste that in there. And that's one big, nasty-looking URL. Just know that once we send that out, that URL is going to go onto this web page and collect all of this data. I wasn't pleased with the format that it was provided in, so I decided to improve on it. So you're going to scrape the page, and you're going to pick up this table data. And we're going to write the code for that. So don't need any of this because that's old stuff. Let's close that down and just get that shrunk a little bit. So now we know that we're going to get some result from that call. So there's one way of thinking of this is that we're going to get some content. Uh, we don't really know what that content is. We could log it out on the server. Uh, let's instead but get more specific. And the cool thing about Cheerio is you can provide it a jQuery selector, which contains the source of the information that you seek. And you can test that in the console. Hmm. Maybe not. Oh, right, because jQuery is not required. Uh, pardon me, jQuery is not present on this page, so instead we'll just do 
document. There we go. So that gets our headers as stated. Uh, and then we're going to need to do a little bit of wacky programming to sanitize those headers. Basically, they contain some French language nonsense that we don't need. So we're going to do a little bit of jQuery magic that I'm not going to get into outside of the scope of this tutorial. Just know that it's like a jQuery hack that cleans the text up for us. And then yet again, I'm going to actually borrow from a previous tutorial, which I'll link to in the show notes that goes in and scrapes that page even more. So I just pasted a lot of code into that method there, so I'm going to slowly go over each part. So we've got some Meteor method that runs on our server. We're going to call it get school data. We use an HTTP get to scrape this content in concert with Cheerio. All this stuff down here is a little bit of imperative programming to manipulate that data. You're going to be able to use this structure, but you're probably going to have to tweak a few things. You're definitely going to have to tweak this CSS selector. You're going to have to go to the web page of the table that you're using, find the elements you want, and play with that a little bit. That's on you. The rest of this code going to make you happy. This is going to do something later on, this commented outline, and that we don't need. So now we have this data object that we're returning. Our get school data method returns a data object. So we have to retrieve that, and that's why we do our call up here, and we set a session variable, but instead Gonna just wipe that out and see what the result is in the console. I'm gonna guess it's an error. That's clean. So let's quickly list what packages we're using while the browser does its thing. We just pasted a lot of code in there and miraculously it works. So you can see, much like our table, we get all of that data except represented as a JSON object, which is what makes Meteor happy. So these are the packages that we're currently using. And what we're going to do is add, I'm not even going to try, a wonderful package called reactive table. My bad, right here. I've been using this table for several projects. I highly recommend it. Okay, and while that adds, I'm going to say, oh, look, all we have to do is add that into our HTML. So instead of rant, I'm going to paste that in my collection. is going to be called schools and I'm going to go back into my server code and say okay I need a collection called schools I want each row to be an item in that collection so if I save that and I go into the Meteor Mongo shell and show you my collections, hmm, we have none. Interesting. Still none. We have a little bit of a 
the table there. Oh, cool, we've got an error. Exception. Schools is not defined. Oh. Why didn't I do that? Just for fun. Uh, you know what? Let's just go and do that. Right, so now I'm going to actually define that collection of schools and see what happens. See if we have any errors in our server here. I apologize if that's not very clean for you guys to read. Cool. Well, we have a schools collection, so I take that as a good thing. Let's check it out. Isn't that neat? And let's check out the length. Wow, we have 5,000 records. Okay, so we could carry on with that example. But I basically want to showcase how easy all of that was. Now, we do have this crazy method in here. We don't want to do any more insertions. But as stated, we're really just making a call with an HTTP GET. We're passing it a URL. We're using a jQuery selector to say, go and get this content. I clean that content up. We then use that inside of this again this imperative manipulating data type method to return some magical data object it's actually a good point of clarification here is that this data object isn't doing anything it's entirely this insertion this is what creates our schools collection within the mongodb so when I do show collections inside my MongoDB shell, I have schools. And as we just found out, schools, there's 5,000 people that are in the schools collection. And they look like that. They have an employer, a surname, a given name, a position, etc. So what's going on in the browser? Because we want to display this data. We're not done until it gets into the client. Argument is not an instance. Oh. So I read that is that my client doesn't know about schools. Maybe it's because I misspelled it. Let's reload that. Okay, we don't want to do any more insertions. Because if we go back in here and test the length, OK, that code didn't run. That's good. I would like to keep the data reasonably lean so that our table will render. Same error. quickly see what packages we've got. I did add the reactive table package, so I'm not sure why we would have to do some ghetto debugging. That should shoot out a message to the client for me. We have a collection called schools. And by making this schools collection up here, it should be global. So we should have it available to us on the client and the server. Oh, you know what? What I need to do is say schools. Ah, yes. So in our template, 
called data table. We need to give this template access to data that's called schools. So we're going to give it a helper. A helper. <laughs> oh no. Awesome. Called schools. And that's simply going to return. Whoops. A MongoDB query on the client. Let's see, 5,000 records. And there they are. That's pretty ugly. So let's do Meteor add MRT. Okay, let's not be fancy. Bootstrap. So you can see in pretty short order, we've rigged ourselves up this app, which at this point, I can now run without any server code. So if I save it, everything is now on the client. Or, I should say, because Meteor allows us to do this, it's synchronized between the client and the server. And because we have this helper called schools that goes into our database and pulls out that schools collection, we now get this list, which we can sort. And filter. Which I think is pretty wonderful. Allows us a little more uh, clarity and transparency into uh, the world of private sector salaries in Canada, which I'm sure many of you are interested in. And this is great timing because I'm about to get attacked by my lovely cat, Rosie, who if you hear me shout out momentarily, it's because she is currently walking on the keyboard. So that's it. Uh, thank you so much. Please subscribe. Please like the video if you enjoyed the tutorial. If you've gone this far, thank you. Um, I will recap very, very quickly. We've got this schools collection that lives inside of our MongoDB. We're not running this method anymore. Because we've already stored it, we simply use a helper to get it into the template. And our HTML, with the help of Reactive Table, is that simple. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you guys next time.